I've not been working on game reviews as much lately, so why not do a bunch of succinct ones to look back at this year of gaming that will mostly be celebrated in the Game Awards 2023? Why not? I, Vidi of Vidi's Gaming Videos, am doing something a little different, talking about the Game Awards 2023. Outside of a little commentary on my Vidi Plays channel, especially a very recent commentary while playing a couple of Mario Party games, I've not really talked about the Game Awards. I guess it's that sort of almost corporate affair, and that even shows how many years it's been since I've watched the Oscars, and I'm a film buff. However, gaming this year has truly been a good year, and I've wanted to talk about some of the games released this year that I've played. I have, of course, not played every single nominee, and even several of them I've only played for demos or not even completed. So treat my reviews of these games as review impressions. After all, I've been keen to know what you think. But before we get started, honorable mentions or nominees to note. Unfortunately, I've not seen any of the nominees in regards to esports or content creators. They probably could have nominated me or others I watch, but good luck to the nominees anyway. For the adaptations category, I've only seen the Mario movie and the The Last of Us HBO series, and I can say both are good. I have not played Alan Wake 2 and Baldur's Gate 3, but I've heard good things about them. I've not played any Baldur's Gate games, and Alan Wake 2, well, I'd rather it wasn't a digital only release. The first Alan Wake gave me Twin Peaks vibes, and I would like to play Alan Wake 2, Lies of P and Sonic Superstars, two other nominees. I have little more to say than what I said in other videos about the specific demos, including playing Sonic at PAX, as said in my vlog. I also don't have much to say about most anticipated game, but at least that could be part of the call to action to discuss in the comments that I'll be talking about at the end of this video. Anyway, intro over. Let's talk about the games I've played. I have written a review script for Cocoon, and I can succinctly summarize it as it is an exceptional indie and indeed a great debut for Geometric Interactive. Designer of Playdead's games Limbo and Inside, Jeppe Carson, has made a simply beautiful looking game with near perfectly balanced intricate puzzles of switches and warping between worlds that are backed up by ambient music. Its story is up to interpretation because of a focus on puzzle gameplay, but believe me, you'll like this game's puzzles. I almost don't know what to say about Chance of Sonar, but then again, I just play the demo of it on the Switch. The production values of a high contrast in colours and beautiful music immediately stood out. And then you see the game is almost unlike any other indie game ever. You learn a fictional language by guessing and observing symbols and their patterns, which if anything is like learning a new language in real life. I've barely scratched the surface of a story with the different cultures and their language barriers, though the game's puzzles and stealth sections added to it may appear somewhat frustrating. Okay, we have another demo, not the last one in this video actually, and it's for a game that I was intrigued about after seeing it in a Nintendo Direct. Dave the Diver is a curious mixture of underwater exploration combined with restaurant simulation. Though there appears to be an interesting story, the pixel art is also nice, the gameplay is interesting, where the restaurant simulation is about trying to be quick and efficient with orders and even pouring drinks. The underwater exploration is about getting seafood and treasures, and apparently has boss battles far down in the depths. Though the controls in regards to movement and aiming felt finicky. This may be an indie worth diving into. I'll be honest, the thought of playing a fishing game like Dredge didn't seem appealing on the surface, but this indie game's hook of a somber atmosphere and Lovecraftian vibes and horrors may have reeled me in. Okay, enough water and fishing puns. Unless you have, say, played Zelda Wind Waker, then that might give you an idea of what to expect with the gameplay. Exploration, fishing minigames centered on timing, and the dread of low visibility and sanity and maybe horrifying creatures during the dangerous fog at night, plus DLC released as far back as October this year, it makes for an interesting if somewhat odd mixture for a potentially relaxing indie game that I played the demo of on Switch. While certainly similar to the 2018 and 2020 Spider-Man games, Spider-Man 2 is just so much fun. You get to go around an open city and stuff and fight off bad guys as Spider-Man. So what else is new? Why, you get to alternate between controlling Peter Parker and Miles Morales, which means more abilities than ever, more suits than ever, more skill points than ever. It takes a little time to get used to the controls in regards to using abilities and gadgets. But once you do, beating the bad guys, sometimes with surprise assistance from the other Spider-Man you're not controlling, is great. 
Small problems do extend to noticeable tech problems surrounding the visuals and subtitles, and what feel like vaguely hard to find items and quests at times. But this game is that good. Spider VD approves. Much like the Pikmin series overall, the most recent entry in the series, Pikmin 4, is an odd game to consider in regards to the sim strategy gaming experience, but this is a great experience. While you gradually expand your Pikmin numbers before you even reach a maximum of 100 and get one treasure after another, it's a surprisingly well-paced and addictive, if somewhat easy, game. I've not tried the multiplayer, which I've heard is limited, but it at least has the Danduri battle idea from the single-player campaign. That's something. Also, hopefully the family, note for nominations, have not been sad at losing Pikmin. But at least there's a rewind feature for that. Also, Ochi is cute. I know, I know, where is slash was the review of this game? Well, life, burnout and other things saw fit to drag me away from this great game and I hate them for that. While I do prefer the original Resident Evil 4 based on replay value alone, and that it came first, the remake for one of my fave Resident Evil games was better than expected. Some moments and settings are made more chilling than previous and the changes to the action-packed combat make for some balanced changes to the enemies. Plus, separate ways and more extended this game's lifespan. But there are no horror game nominations, so maybe this game wins that by default, rather than action slash adventure game. I've not played Sabotage Studios 2018 game The Messenger, but having started to properly devote time to their other game Sea of Stars after being impressed by the demo that I talked about some time ago, I am genuinely loving this game. Is it just another 16-bit style JRPG? Well, sort of. Its art style is still unique, the music is nice and dynamic in tone, including the upbeat Gals theme. Surely Yasunori Mitsuru of Chrono Trigger fame composed that one. Have a gameplay of suitably challenging action command combat, puzzle themed dungeons like Golden Sun, and especially the secrets that are tantalizing in just how out of reach they are in field exploration. I will admit, aspects of the dialogue and story make it feel like the writers tried way too hard to be charming, and it sometimes doesn't work. Still, this appeals to my interest in 16-bit RPGs. I'm embarrassed to admit that Super Mario Bros. Wanda is not finished yet because a multiplayer commentary series for Viddy Plays seemed to be locked in. So, yeah. But it's hard to deny that this brand new side scrolling Mario game is pretty darn fun to play. The level designs and power-ups are wacky, owing to some pretty cool visuals, and the multiplayer is certainly fun to warrant a nomination. As crazy and chaotic as it is to see all the characters moving around on screen and the camera going almost haywire. The closest you can get to a first impressions of this game from me is to look at the game playlist on the Viddy Plays channel. Maybe now I should just go through the rest of this game alone. A beautiful pixel art style that even goes beyond the adored 60-bit era, nice electronic music that focuses on piano, a possibly poignant narrative, um, yes please, a space for the Unbound, sign me up! The game is mostly a point-and-click adventure game with similar controls to the Cat Lady, but with the twists of using a magic red book to space dive into people's minds. If I have one criticism, it's that the gameplay seems too simplistic, but then again, I play the demo on Switch, and even use special moves as mentioned on the options menu. Still, the narrative of Atmar and his girlfriend Rhea who live in Indonesia using magic powers seems lovely. If you've seen my review, at least part one, you know right away that, to me, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is an amazing game. The expectations surrounding the long-awaited sequel to the still memorable and series-changing Breath of the Wild were exceeded, where the story and world felt like a mixture of a nice feeling of being home again, while also exploring uncharted territory in the past and present that pertain to the sky and depths. Complementing all this are new abilities that, while finicky sometimes, lead to an awe-inspiring non-linearity that made for so many playstyles and different adventures, it's unbelievable! While certain quests, storytelling elements and deliberate elements of familiarity could have really been improved on regardless of the pace the player goes in this vast open world, this recent Zelda game is more than exceptional and quite possibly my personal choice for Game of the Year 2023. So, I hope you enjoyed these little reviews. Let me know what you thought of these games, but more importantly, 
I want the rest of the discussion to be about what other nominees should I have played or elaborate on? Do you agree with the games in their nominated categories? What other games released this year do you think should have been nominated and in what categories? Maybe you can also say about which games you voted for. Tell all in the comments and have a good day or night or whatever it is. See you soon.